Hi, we're going to go over the types of acid-base reactions. Um, I've put a graph and some information for each of these. So let's begin, and we're going to start with the strong acid and a strong base. This has a special name. It's called a neutralization reaction. Pretty cool in a neutralization reaction. Honestly, by the time you do um, take away the spectator ions, write the net ionic equation, it is just a water reaction. It would be an H plus plus OH minus yields water. That's a neutralization reaction. And that happens every time you bring together a strong acid and a strong base. That is the net ionic equation. Now, if we were to graph this, um, let's say that we start with our uh, HCl, which is going to have a really, really low pH. It's a strong acid of a one. Um, and we're going to add some mills, drop, 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 doing a titration um, of sodium hydroxide. Um, very, very classic uh, titration curve. It's really low, pretty flat, and then it quickly, really sharp, turns up a very steep slope, and then it levels off at the pH of 14. Um, now here's what is cool. At this equivalence point, so that's where the moles of the hydrogen equals the moles of the hydroxide, the pH of a neutralization reaction is always seven. When H plus plus OH when those are equal moles. Um, and that fits, that totally works with thinking about KW, um, that KW equals concentration of hydrogen times hydroxide, one times 10 to the minus 14. If those are equal, then you'd have to have 10 to the uh, minus seven for the hydrogen and that's a pH of seven. Um, okay, so really special, neutralization, strong acid, strong base, equivalence point, pH equals seven, classic curve really flat at the bottom steep steep long slope um, and then it goes flat at the top again okay now let's come down here where we have a strong base and a weak acid so i gave an example here a strong base is going to be the sodium hydroxide and the weak acid is going to be the acetic acid um, so we're going to start with our acetic acid so a little bit weaker acid is going to be a ph of about three um, so we go ahead and begin adding our strong base. Drop, 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 drop. Now here's what you notice when you have something weak. <clears throat> the slope where we have this inflection point, uh, this steep part, it's shorter and it's not as up and down. It's not as steep, it's a little more slanted. A little bit, um, uh, the grade isn't as steep on it. Um, so you have this gradual climb, it comes up and then it, um, it changes pH where it gets a little bit steeper and then it levels off. At the end, all you're going to have is the NaOH, so it levels off at that strong base, which is a 14. Um, so you can tell the difference between, hopefully, this graph and this graph. Um, a little bit gra more gradual, not as flat at the beginning, and then the slope isn't as long, it's not as steep. Now, super interesting, when you have a strong base plus a weak acid, the pH is greater than seven. Um, now, the quick way that I tell my students to remember, remember this is think of whatever strong that's tr that trumps, that pulls the pH up. Um, so if you have something strong, strong base, the pH will be greater than seven. Now, that's not the real reason. It's just if they need to really fast um, remember it, that's how I, I teach them to spit it out really quick. Um, here's the reason why the pH is greater than seven. They're going to have, at that point, all of the sodium hydroxide react with all of that weak acid. So what's left? You are going to have the acetate ion, which is the conjugate base, that's the conjugate base, plus water. So if you put in the exact moles that we need for the hydroxide to react with the acetic acid, remember the sodium's a neutral ion, it won't impact pH. Um, so exact moles of hydroxide to react with the exact moles of acetic acid. All you have left is this neutral ion sodium floating in there, it's a spectator ion. Um, notice I dropped that off, you'd have an ending right here, but it's a spectator ion that's gone. All right, it's still there, but it's not reacting. Um, all you already have is this acetate ion and the water. Well, that acetate ion is a conjugate base. It's a base. Um, so when that's floating in the water, it brings the pH a little bit above seven. So it's actually the conjugate base of the weak acid causes the pH to be above seven. Okay, let's look at another one. Uh, let's flip it now. Let's do a strong acid with a weak base. So we're going to have hydrochloric acid, strong, strong acid with a weak base, ammonia. So we're going to start with our ammonia. It's a weak base, so its pH would be about a nine. 
Um, we have this uh, pH of nine star adding the um, mills of the HCl, that strong acid, drop, 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 drop. So look at this and especially compare it against um, that strong acid, strong base. So the, it um, isn't flat at the top, it kind of gradually decreases and then it slopes down, not as long, not as steep. Um, and it's going to end because we'll end with just HCl is going to end at a pH of one. Now notice this at our equivalence point where the moles of the um, at hydrogen equal the hydroxide, um, the, so the acid and the base, the pH here is less than seven. Oh my goodness. Um, why is that? Well, it's going to be the conjugate acid of the weak base. Um, it's an acid, so it pulls the pH down. Now again, if I'm teaching my students, you, you got to answer this fast, maybe it's a, a multiple choice question. You just think the strong trumps that pulls the pH down. But again, in reality, let me show you what's happening. This is going to produce an NH4 plus plus a Cl minus. So if you have exact moles perfect, that strong acid weak base react perfect moles, what's left over? Well, in the water solution, you're going to have the ammonium ion floating and the chloride. Well, the chloride is neutral. It's not going to impact pH, but this right here is a weak acid. So that's what pulls that pH below a seven. Now, the last option that we could have is weak and weak, when we have a weak acid and a weak base. So I have a recommendation on this. I want you to go and watch my video under acid-base equilibrium, that playlist, um, where it says predict direction of acid-base reactions. You have to compare the Ka values, the Ka of the um, acid and the conjugate acid. Uh, whichever um, Ka value is largest, the reaction will lie on the opposite side. And that uh, video explains it really, really well. So really your takeaway on this, if you have a weak acid and a weak base, you need to look at the ionization constants, the Ka and the Kb values. Um, look at Ka or Kb and you can figure out what's going to happen with that reaction. So you need a little bit more information on this. Um, if you are in an AP chemistry class, um, this should be um, expected given Ka values to predict or given Kb values to predict uh, where, what side the reaction will favor. Um, but that's really the extent of what you would be held accountable for. Uh, you definitely need to know these graphs as well as the pHs um, for the weak um, and the justification. There's going to be the conjugate base or the conjugate acid that impact the pH at that equivalence point. Okay, there you have the types of acid-base reactions. Kind of exciting you're learning this. Have a great day and enjoy it. Thanks.